Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. I'm back in the forum answering another question today. And the title of this forum post is multi-page app versus single page app, help. So we've got a question from Cliffwood James here. And the issue that Cliffwood James is, is struggling with is something that's kind of a classic issue inside of Bubble. You see this issue come up over and over again in terms of app organization. Should you build all of your elements on a single page which usually involves showing or hiding different groups using URL parameters and custom states, um, depending on where the user is in, in their journey, or should you split things up into multiple pages? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that issue at a high level, and then I kinda wanna jump off of this forum post and show you a system that I've been using um, in the new responsive engine that's been working really well that involves using reusable elements, which is, what the, what the uh, response that was marked the solution here talks about is using reusable elements on a single page. So I'm going to show you an example of that because it's something that I've been working with myself and I, I really enjoy organizing my app that way, at least so far. It's been working pretty well. So Cliffwood James. Hi guys, I've started working on a system and made it an SPA, single page app. The problem is that I've already got many repeating groups and elements, and it's impacting my editor performance beyond all hell. And I'm really struggling to even get developing my app. Well, I'm sorry, Cliffwood James, that you're going through hell inside of the editor here. Um, and this is one thing that you see often. It's one of the downsides of building things on a single page is the more and more elements you add to your page, the more clogged up and, and sluggish the, the editor can become. And hopefully that's something that gets fixed soon, but it's definitely an issue that I've seen and, and experienced myself in the past when building things on a single page. Um, the other issue with it is, is, is just the, well, I guess the, the page itself gets really cluttered. You have, a, what ends up happening is you'll, your elements tree will just be massive. And it can be very hard to find a specific element that you know exists on that page um, and just, just keep things organized and make your life easier as a developer, right? So, I mean, the benefits of it, of course, um, typically people talk about the benefits in terms of the speed. So there will be a longer initial page load. But once that page does load for the user, navigating between different areas of the app on that page can feel quite snappy. And that's why generally people are drawn to building more and more elements on a single page. So let's, let's look at the solution here. It says the best way to structure a single page app is to use a reusable element. After two years of bubble, I realized it's too late. It will keep your app organized with all the workflows inside each reusable element and the app will load faster. So better for user experience. I've started experimenting with this too, just using reusable elements and keeping things organized inside of reusable elements. And I really like this approach, especially with the new responsive engine. And what I've done is I've kind of put together a little demo for you to look at here. And I thought we would build a page, not from scratch, because I've already built out the reusable elements and, and covered all of the design pieces that we're gonna use for this demo. But what we'll do is we'll take these different reusable elements We'll put them on a page, kind of like just putting puzzle pieces together, and then we'll work on the navigation flow together. And I'll show you a, uh, a few cool things along the way that, that I think um, are really great in terms of the things that you can use over and over again um, on different pages inside of your app. So anyways, let's jump into the app here and I'll just show you what I've built. So this is a reusable element called admin dashboard. And I have four different reusable elements here that I've created for this admin page. So the idea is we're gonna have an admin page. That admin page is gonna consist of a few different components, right? We're gonna have a dashboard, which is what we're looking at here. All of this data, by the way, is just static dummy data that I've made up. So nothing's actually coming from the database. We're just focusing on the navigation flow and, and, and the design right now. So we have a dashboard page. We have a contacts page here and a settings page. And then this little navigation piece right here. 
So you can see I've kind of extracted the different components of my admin page into reusable elements. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a page here called admin. If I go to the admin page right now, this is just a blank page. There's nothing on it. And of course, we are for all of these components and for this page as well, we're using the new beta responsive engine. So now that I have my different components created, what's really nice about this is I can kind of just drop them into this page and they're all contained within the reusable element, right? So what I'll do is the first thing I'm going to do, actually, let's just do this. We'll take admin dashboard, that reusable element, and we'll just drop it onto the page like this. Now I'm going to go to the page here and the page container layout is a row. So let's, well, let, that's fine for now, actually, because what I want to do is I want to put all of these reusable elements onto this page, and then I'm going to group them together in this one main container. And the layout of that container will be a column. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So we have admin dashboard. Let's put the contacts on as well. So you can see because the page layout right now is a row, it, it snaps to the right side and tries to take up as much room as it can on that particular row. Then we have admin settings as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all three of these and I'm just going to group them together in a column, just like that. So let's go up to the elements tree. Let's get into some good practices and start renaming our elements as they get created. I'll call this group main container. And this is going to be the container that's holding all three of these. Now that admin nav reusable element that we were looking at is a floating group. So watch what happens as I drag it onto the screen. It's kind of going to sit over top because it's a floating group. It's going to sit over top of this group main container here. Now, I think there are a number of ways to approach this in terms of like, obviously we don't want this floating group to, we, we don't want the group main container to go all the way to the left side of the page because then it'll be hidden underneath this floating group here. That's our navigation bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on group main container. First of all, let's get rid of this minimum width here. Cause I don't care if it's, I don't want this to have a minimum width right now and we'll uncheck fit width to content. Same with the minimum height. I don't care about a minimum height right now. But what we'll do is we'll say that I want the left margin of this group main container to be 240 pixels, which is the width of this floating group right here. So everything's kind of pushed over because of this margin here. Okay, so let's preview this page and just take a look at what it looks like right now. Get rid of this debug mode. And so far, so good. And now all we have to do is just work on this navigation part of the flow, because if I click on this right now, nothing's happening. So I want to basically take each reusable element here and set its visibility to invisible by default. And I want to basically write some rules to say when each reusable element should be should become visible. So let's pause for a second and we'll, we'll come back and do that. All right, so let's get back into the editor here. And what's really nice about this, let's just pause and appreciate um, what we see here so far, is that despite the fact that there's so much on this page, there's tons of different elements, um, what we actually see, what's actually on this page here is just a number of reusable elements and all of the individual elements are contained within each reusable element. But the point I'm trying to get at here is this makes a really nice developer experience for us because we can come to this admin page. Our elements tree is very small. And if I want to actually change any component of, of this dashboard, um, of this dashboard component, for example, all I could have to do is go into that component click on edit element and I can change whatever I want to change here. So it keeps things contained, compartmentalized. And that's part of the reason I really like this approach. So everything just feels a little bit more organized. Now, one of the challenges with this approach is that these reusable elements don't know about the other reusable elements that I've created. They're all kind of contained to their own world, right? So that can make things 
challenging in terms of getting them to communicate with each other or more precisely passing data between them and things like that. We're not going to go, we're not going to talk much about data at all. But what we will do is we'll go to this admin nav section because this component right here is where we want to set up some workflows to allow the user to navigate between different parts of our app, right? So if we think about this, when the user clicks on dashboard, we want that dashboard reusable element to show when they click on contacts, the contacts one, and, and so on, right? Now, there's a particular system that I really like to use for this, for navigation, I mean, and I'll show you how to set that up right now. So what I like to do, you, can, you don't have to do it this way. There are a number of ways to, to do this, but I'm going to go to data and inside of option sets here, you can see I've created an option set called admin pages with three different options here, dashboard, settings, and contacts. So what we'll do is when dashboard is clicked, we're going to use URL parameters and we're going to navigate to that admin page and pass the URL parameter that is going to be one of these options here. Now, if you're brand new to Bubble and if, if some of the things that I'm going to going to start talking about here sound confusing. Um, don't worry, first of all. Uh, the option sets, um, URL parameters, custom states are definitely part of the fundamentals that you should master inside of Bubble. And I'll be releasing some more content on that soon. In particular, there's going to be a free course coming up uh, on my website. So lots of great stuff coming soon. And there's also tons of resources out there right now that you can check out to, to discover these things and to learn about them. Anyways, we're going to click on dashboard. We'll start a workflow here. And what we'll do is instead of just creating the same workflow over and over again, which would be navigation, go to page, admin, and we would send more parameters to the page here. Oh, my laptop's going to die. Let me pause and plug that in. And so maybe we would send a parameter uh, let's say the key will be called view and the view will be equal to we could say get an option our option set is admin pages and we want our option to be dashboard we'll just send the display there now we're going to use this same workflow over and over again so what i like to do is i like to create a custom event and we'll call this custom event nav now, this custom event, what's really cool about custom events is that you can pass a type of thing to this custom event that then you, you can then use inside of the workflows here. So I'm going to say that this custom event should receive one of my options that I created the, from the option set called admin settings, which is, or admin pages rather, which is right here. And now what I can do is I can basically just take this exact same workflow that I created here. Let's cut this, this action, and we'll paste it here. Except instead of the view being hard coded to dashboard, we'll just set it to whatever the current workflow admin page is, whatever that display is. And now when group dashboard is clicked, we can say navigation, or sorry, not navigation, we just created a custom event. So we'll go custom events, trigger a custom event, that custom event is going to be called nav. And the workflow thing that we'll pass to it in this case is going to be dashboard. Now, if we wanted to, we could get even more streamlined with this and I could go to design. I could change the type of content here to be an admin page and set its data source. And then the workflow action would literally be the same every time for the workflow thing here, we would pass in the parent groups admin page, but for now, we won't do that. Let's just click on contacts. We'll paste that same action. And instead of the view equal to dashboard, we'll change this to contacts. And <clears throat> excuse me, same with the settings here. There we go. So What's going to happen now, if we preview this page, if I click on dashboard, you can see view equals dashboard, contacts, and settings, right? We're navigating to the page every single time, which is kind of cool.
right? But nothing's happening yet, so not that cool. All we have to do now, though, is go to this admin page and click on our design tab. And we're going to go into our group main container. And we're basically going to go to each one of these reusable elements. And we're going to do two things. We're going to say, number one, that this reusable element is not visible on page load. We're going to collapse when hidden. And number two, we're going to write a condition to say when this reusable element should be visible. In this case, for the dashboard one, when do we want this to be visible? We want it to be vi visible when that page or when that URL parameter, that view parameter is equal to dashboard. So we can say when get data from page URL, parameter name is going to be view. What type of data is this? This is going to be an admin page. Is dashboard, then we'll say this element is visible. Now I'm just going to copy this condition and we're going to quickly do the exact same thing that we just did to that dashboard reusable element with the contacts and the settings. Now, what we could do, I kind of like to use a combination of URL parameters and custom states. I'm not going to do that in this video. Let's also say that I don't care about a fixed height here. We'll uncheck that. There we go. Um, we could use a combination of custom states and URL parameters. The reason I like to do that sometimes is because this get view from page URL expression is a little bit long to keep repeating every single time. So what I'll typically do with this approach is when the page is loaded, I'll set a custom state on the page to whatever the view is. Um, and then I'll just reference that custom state instead of saying get view from page URL every time. But it really doesn't matter. It's ultimately the same thing. That's more of just developer preference. So however you like to do it. And now what we can do is we have view equals dashboard here. You can see that none of these other reusable elements are visible. I can't scroll any further. If I click on contacts, contacts shows up and same with settings, right? And everything now is nice and clean and organized, right? If I were to actually build out workflows here for connected apps or settings, um, I would go into that particular reusable element and all of my workflows would be contained within that reusable element which is nice. It keeps things organized. And typically when you hear people speak about reusable elements, the, the idea behind them, I think uh, what, what you see people use them for most often is for things that are reusable across different pieces of your app. But what I like about this is like, I would still use this system, even though I have no plans on using the admin settings component anywhere else in the app just to keep things organized, I actually like this system. So even if I'm not reusing these elements on different pages of the app, I think it's still, at least so far, I haven't run into any issues using this, using this system and it's worked really well. So I hope that made sense. <laughs> I hope that you uh, found this helpful and that you enjoy and try out this system for yourself. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, Leave a comment if anything was confusing or if you have any questions. And I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.